Welcome back, friends. Hopefully, this is going to be a really helpful video for some of you. Some of you, uh, much of this content will be um, not that helpful. You, you already know much, if not all, of the things that I'm going to tell you about in this video. Um, but for some of you, if you are new to Norway, if you are planning your journey through Norway, if you are wondering about different gear to consider, uh, but more importantly, if you are wondering about how to level marine fishing as efficiently as possible and how to make as much silver as possible to save, uh, you know, for all of the new equipment that is on this map, which by the way, those two questions are so related because truthfully, the fastest way to save money to make the silver and to make that silver to, to buy the new equipment, the fastest way is to actually level up your marine fishing because the higher you go in your marine skill, the more access you'll have to specific rigs, which will either one, just in a general sense, allow you to make more silver per hour or two, will allow you to get better and better at targeting specific fish, going to specific spots on the map and doing really well, doing really well there. Cafe orders, all that stuff. So hopefully as we go through this video, that will become clear to you. Now, just to give you a, a heads up here, this is gonna be a long one because in this video, we're gonna be actually watching a series of other videos that I have just recorded earlier tonight. So this idea was brought up in my uh, Twitch stream earlier today. I was talking about how I wanted to make a video talking about both the sort of gear progression through your journey, your, your time in Norway, as well as sort of how to use that gear and different rigs to navigate it. And Twitch chat came up with a couple people in particular helped me sort of come up with this idea of Yes, showing you some things here in game, which we are live in game right now, but also going to videos that I've already recorded that are going to be the only sound is game sound in these videos, right? And so I'm going to just be able to kind of sit here and talk you through what's happening on some of these videos. Now, as you can see, these are pretty long videos. We may skip around some, but there's a lot of good information in these videos I'm not talking in them, but because of the spots I'm going to, the rig types I'm using, and hopefully watching these videos together will allow me to share some things that I've learned. A lot of this isn't stuff that I personally have learned because of things I've done, but I've been streaming this game a lot since Norway came out. I've spent a lot of time just hanging out with people, learning from them watching other people's content, talking to people. So I'm trying to get all of that together in a fairly helpful way, I'm hoping. Um, but so first, let's talk about the gear progression as, as quickly as I can. Give me a couple minutes here, a few minutes. And then let's get into the video so I can actually, in a more practical way, talk to you about how to use that gear to level your marine skill and earn as much silver as possible in this new incredible map here in Russian Fishing 4. All right. So one quick thing, let me mention, I'm not 100% in marine fishing yet, right? Uh, we're getting closer every day. We're to the point now where points obviously come very slowly. And so the only thing I haven't unlocked yet is dead rig bottom rigs, sorry, dead fish bottom rigs which is 95%, we're very much close to that, and then heavy marine boat rods. So I have a pretty good idea of the lay of the land. I will go ahead and tell you, once I open up the heavy marine boat rods, which is 100%, basically all of the rods I'm showing you right now will rotate down. So my current setups will look like what you see in front of you, except each rod will be down a slot. And so this first rod, the Ocean Queen, which is a pilker rod, it will probably leave the rotation of rods that I use every day. Because out here in Norway, every day, I use all three of these setups. 
I have a light or starter setup. I have a medium or sort of like, you know, midway setup. And I have a heavy or sort of end setup. And once I get that heavy boat rod, at that point, we'll be using all boat rods. But when you start out, you have to use pilka rods. Because when you first come here, the only thing you can use is pilka rods, pilka rigs. And um, assuming that you have unlocked jigging in your spin fishing, right? So that's right here, pretty low. Assuming that you've unlocked jigging here, which for most people, that's a no brainer by the time they get to Norway, then it will also be available here. Now, uh, I'm gonna be referencing briefly here, some stats, information about different reels, um, what skill you have to be in marine fishing to be able to unlock different things. A lot of that information I get from one of two places, Blunty and uh, Kilted Jock, let me make sure I'm saying, um, made these, what do they call it? Excel documents, sorry. Uh, Kilted Jock and Blunty made these Excel documents. I'm gonna try to remember to link you to both of these documents um in the in the at the bottom of this video because both these documents in and of themselves but also all of the resources that blunty actually links you to in his document are just paramount to you being able to understand some of what we're going to be talking about in this video and sort of briefly referencing um so all that being said, let's jump in and let me just tell you about my three setups. So you'll have a entryway setup option, a mid game setup option, and a late game setup option. Okay, first of all, let's talk about the entryway. Now, I have a pilker rod because that's the first thing you have to use when you get to Norway. And I have a conventional reel. Conventional reels came out before this map, right? So we've had conventional reels. In fact, two of the three conventional reels that I use every day at Norway, I owned before this map even came out. But not everyone had conventional reels before this map came out. They were arguably not necessary before Norway. Here, they feel more appropriate, more necessary. Because what do we? what is true about conventional reels? They are typically very strong and have really large spools so that when we're out in the ocean, we've got plenty of line, plenty of play, time to reel in these fish, to fight with these fish. Okay, so I do just want to point out though, for your beginner set, when you first get to Norway, you may want to use a spinning reel you may not want to use a conventional reel, and that's fine. You don't have to use a conventional reel. I'm about to tell you all about my setup. However, if you get here and you already have a Vanga, let's say, it's a no-brainer. Use the Vanga. It's got more power than what I'm using. It also has a big enough spool. It doesn't quite have the same mech weight, but for how much, you know, the type of line and leader we're using in this entryway setup, and the amount of load capacity we have in this rod, that's completely fine. Let's say you have a Tagara. Use the Tagara. Now, where it gets a little bit, I think, harder to decide is let's say you have a um, caliber HSV. Should you, if you have a caliber HSV, should you just let this be your beginning setup or should you save for and purchase something like what I have, which is the Taiga C30? I think that's the point in which it's a little harder to decide. In terms of the max drag, those two reels, the caliber HSV spinning reel, and the, and the Beluga Taiga C30 conventional reel, max drag, those are pretty similar. Taiga C is 15 point whatever, 
Caliber is 15.4. I think they're both 15.4. Okay. Now, the Taiga C is going to have a bigger spool. And the Taiga C has a heavier mech weight. Just for reference sake, let me just talk about this really quick. The Taiga C, now these aren't official numbers, but people in game have tested. The Taiga C is rated as around 109 kilos mech weight. Technically, what that means is if you lock your drag, then you can use the power of the mech weight when you are fighting a fish. So as long as your line and leader, whatever strength they are, if you lock this mech, you're sort of tapping into the power of that mech weight. Now, that's going to damage the mech faster over time instead of normally what you would damage is your friction brake because it's pulling line even though you're trying to you know tighten it down. But if you lock it, then that's where the weight of the mech comes into play. So if you don't understand all that, you know, come to my stream. We'll talk about it in more detail. I think most people at this point, um, unless you're pretty new to the game, probably has a sense of what I'm talking about. And there'll be a couple times in these videos we're watching that I'll try to circle back and reference like, oh, see, we locked it there. You know, you can tell the difference. But um, all that being said, that's where the Taiga C30 is a better entrance point to this map than something like a Caliber HSV is. You've got so much more mech weight. And unlike carp fishing or other fishing we've done in the game, at, at this map, except for a few exceptions, there are a few people that don't do this, but I would say most of us pick our spots where we do lock it. And, you know, we're reeling in fish a little faster. We're fighting with them in a different way and using that mech weight. So, all right. All that being said, you see that this type is a pilker rod. It's the Ocean Queen 86. Uh, this is, um, to me, the just the best choice for your first pilker rod. You know, you see that load capacity is over 60. So if you wanted to go 60 kilo line, um, and 60 liter, right? You could do that as long as your reel, you know, takes advantage of that, which in this case, this does. I think staying at 45 is probably smarter because the Taiga C is only 15.4 max drag. I mean, to, at some point, I just, you know, I only want to push it so far, I guess. Um, and at this point, when I'm using this rig, and you'll see this, you know, this would be a little different when you first get here. But when I'm using this rig, I know that I am targeting very small fish. So... Uh, that being said, this to me is a really good entrance point to this map. Your only decision point in my mind is, do you want to use a spinning reel you already have? Or do you want to save for something like the Taiga C? Now, the real list on these spreadsheets that I'm going to link you in this video tell you all about the stats of all of these conventional reels and spinning reels, but the conventional reels that we have here in the game now. So if I pull them up in the store real quick, there aren't, to me, there aren't many options that are as good as the Taiga C. So the Taiga C30, 10,494 silver. That may seem like a lot to you, but for how much silver you're gonna make at this map with this reel, it's actually not very much. <laughs> that cost is pretty reasonable. It's a very cheap way to get into this map. Um, to me, there's not a whole lot of better options. Now, some people have asked about the Siberia Steelhead. Yeah, I mean, you just need to look at the stats yourself. I will say this one is probably the one that, to me, comes closest to being competitive. You save a little silver. You get a little bit more max drag. I think it has... Here, let me pull it up. Regal 22S. Um, it has 580... Uh, slightly smaller spool, it looks like. But the real difference, the reason why the Taiga C wins, in my mind, is the mech weight of this Regal is 74. The mech weight of the Taiga C is 109. 
So the Taiga Sea just has more flexibility. If you wanted to use the Taiga Sea for catfishing one day, it's strong enough. That mech weight is strong enough. If you want to, like I said, push it and lock it at 60, you've got plenty of room. Where with this Regal, it's like a little iffy. But this Regal is a little cheaper. I could talk myself into it. I've never tried it. I'd love to hear from you if you have a Regal. What do you think about your Regal? I, you know, I mean, I, I think that it does have a little bit more drag. You'll notice that. That's nice. Um, and at 74 you know, if you're if you're doing a 45 kilo setup like I am on my first one, um, then there's no difference. It's just the spool size, which spool size matters. But with the smaller line, you're going to fit a ton of, of line on there anyway. Okay, so there's the entrance. There's the first one. Let's get through these other two really quick. Now, let me see about let me say about this middle setup. The middle setup when you hit. 55%, and I'll tell you on the video when we get there, but when you hit 55% on Marine Skill, you're able to now use um, light boat rods. Okay? That's what this middle setup is all about. However, some people skip it altogether. So they don't, they, they still use their beginner setup all the way until they get to the heavy setup. And that is reasonable. And we'll talk about this more when we get to the appropriate video. For me, I really liked having this middle setup. This middle setup really helped me level my marine skill faster. But that was my experience. That might not be everyone's experience. Okay, this is the middle setup. It is, a, it is a boat rod, but it's a light boat rod because we can't use medium boat rods yet. We're only at 55% or whatever. So it's a light boat rod. I use the Cardinal 22S. To me, this is a great midway reel. For some people, this might be their heavy reel. So let me tell you the, the stats of the Cardinal 22S real quick. Now, this one's going to run you just over 25,000 silver. Okay, but the max drag is 21.8, so a good bit more power than the Taiga C. A lot more. I mean, you'll feel it. A huge spool. This thing has a massive spool, just like the Taiga C does, but this is another one that has a massive spool. Four and a half stars, and this uh, mech weight is rated at somewhere greater than 132, supposedly, from people that tested it. So again, you can lock it all the way up past 100 kilos if you want to. Now, I use this setup at this point at 60 kilos. So the first light setup I have at 45, this one I have at 60. I know the fish I'm targeting when I'm using this setup. And 99% of the time, 60 is enough. It is possible, having it set up like this, that I will hook into the wrong fish and wish that I was using my heavy setup and not be able to, to land it. But that's very slim chance. I, I typically know what I'm doing when I set up these rigs and know what fish I'm targeting. But anything's possible in the sea. It's a scary place out there at times. Even in fishing spots that you think are safe, huge sharks or tuna or swordfish or whatever show up out of nowhere occasionally. But this is my setup. The Coast Runner 70 light boat rod, load capacity 78. By the way, on all these rods, one of the things you have to pay attention to is the test. Just like in the reels, you want to know the max drag, spool size, um, the mech weight, right? There's important things about the reels. Well, the rod, one of the important things is load capacity and test. Because this test, especially on the max side, 350 grams, that's going to change how heavy of a rig you can set up. It's going to limit you. There's some lures and, you know, drop shots and stuff that you may not be able to use until you get a big enough rod to manage that. So again, real quick, let's keep moving. This is the mid setup. Are there other options? Of course there are. There are other reels that you could look at that would compete with the Cardinal, but I think it's pretty, um, 
most people would agree that have one or have looked into it would agree that this is a really solid option, the Cardinal 22S. Same with the Coast Runner. A lot of people would say, oh, you should just skip the light boat ride. And that's fine. It, I'm, you know, not right or wrong answer here. For me, it felt like the right thing to do. And looking back, I think it was to get the light boat ride. But, you know, this thing costs, well, I don't even remember, seven or eight K or something. Thousand K, you know, seven or eight thousand. So it's not cheap. And that silver could go towards the next purchase. But you're going to make a lot of silver. What's going to seem like it takes forever is leveling up your marine skill fishing if you don't use some of the strategies, techniques, and stuff that we talk about in this video, or similar things. It doesn't have to be my way, I'm just saying. There's definitely a strategy to it. Okay, and last but not least, the big boy, the heavy setup. This is the Poseidon 80050. Again, as far as medium boat rods go, I think it's pretty unanimous. This is the one to get. It's expensive, it's 30,000 silver, but it has a test up to 1,400. That means you can put these giant lures, the thousand gram pilker lures. You can put all kinds of crazy stuff on this rod. And I don't know, there's what, maybe four or five reels that you would say are like currently of what's in the game, the best reels for the sea. Reef Borealic of the one I have is one of them. They're all somewhere between 60 and 90,000 silver. Uh, I will mention that let me see if i can pick it out of the store someone in in the in in my stream recently told me that they think that this is the best real um value overall value in the game i think it was this one let me look at the stats real quick the albacore 40 DS costs 62,000 basically, right? Yep. It's got 30.8 drag, so a lot of strength. It's great. It's got double um, gear ratio. Now, the, the lower gear ratio is not quite as low as some of, some of the very high end reels, but you're saving 30 grand or, you know, 20 something thousand silver. Um, it has a huge spool, right? Like at 32 millimeters, you still get 1200 meters of line on this. It's a five star rated and the, the mech weight is rated somewhere over 300 based on the max load testing that's been done. So anyway, possibly the best value all around value. Um, but you know, the triumph, the beluga, Sorry, the Triumph, the Borealica, the Imperial. Um, I think those are probably three plus the, I, I don't know. There's five or six that you might consider that would kind of go nicely with this rod. You can use up to 181 shock leader, right? That's how much power we're getting when we actually lock it. Now, normally we're dra max drag of about 34 with this thing, but when we lock it up, we're getting a lot more power than that. Okay, those are the rods, right? Now, let's do a little foreshadowing here and uh, just kind of look at some of the fish that we've caught. Um, first of all, ooh, I did fish for blue whiting, but just briefly. Let's just make sure we don't have any of these cafe orders on accident. I don't think we do. All right, so... Here's the fish. So over a thousand silver in some of the fish that we've caught. So you will see a lot of these fish in these next videos, okay? Um, that we're gonna watch together now. All right, let's get on it. Let's get this party started. How long have we gone so far? We're 24 minutes in and we're about to start the videos. Video number one is uh, jigging rig. All right, so here's the idea guys. And you can see it on the screen here. Let me make sure it's above me here. Okay. So, um, like I said, if, if you, like me, have this as your first setup, what kind of rigs are you going to first use? You've just gotten to Norway. Um, your marine skill is low. 
you're trying to figure out what to fish with. Well, here you go. Jig, just a basic. And by the way, I did this first on per, on purpose. So when I first started fishing, I used pilker rigs like crazy. Um, and using the pilker rod, but I used pilker rigs, okay? I didn't use marine jigging rigs for a long time because the pilker rig seemed really good, and it is. But if I could go back, I would use marine jigging rigs a lot more often, more early and often. I would go back and forth between the two. So that's why I put jigging rigs first. And, and you can see I'm using this handmade rubber fish. It All the handmade rubber lures, which if you haven't leveled up lure making, you can do that easily. It's very inexpensive because it's one of the first things you learn to make. And they are terrific here. So... Here we go. First time you've just set up your jigging rig. You're out at Norway for the first time. And I believe we started on the 34 meter bank. So you'll see there'll be some different ones at the end, but mostly what you'll see me fish on are the two banks, the beginner banks, 34 meter and 41 meter. Okay. I think this one's at 34. So you can see we've let it go to the bottom and now we're just going to start hitting the right mouse button to pilker. You'll see per uh, perking will come up. Sorry, perking will come up in the bottom left. Now it's got a little movement in the bottom layer. So it shows that we're at the bottom and we're perking. All right, there we go. Boy, that was a quick bite. And, and that's the thing, using these soft lures. And there are other great lures. I can't remember. I think I used like a couple other lures. You just... Different lures. Oh, the first fish fell away. That's so funny. FGA there. Fish got away. You can use different soft lures. Uh, try different ones. I mean, there's like, you know, maggots, uh, real minnows. Um, I'm sure I'll bring up the list in a minute here. There's so many, uh, several of the soft lures work so well here. Um, definitely experiment with different ones. Things do get better. But I have to say, the fishing can be really good even when you don't have anything else unlocked except for this and the pilker, pilker rigs. It's still very good fishing out here. All right, second fish. So we just brought our friction break up. Control right click will set the hook like that may not be necessary. That's really intended for float fishing, but I've gotten in the habit and just, it's a hard habit to break. I still use it on all types of fishing. Wow. What a first fish. I forgot that was the first one. Spiny dogfish. All right. So now we're going to switch. Yeah. All of the handmaids. It's like I'm reading my own mind are so good. There's maggots. Maggots are good. Provokers. All of the quickers work really well. There's so many soft lures. Uh, all right, let's speed this up a little bit. I feel like I fished with this maggot for a while and maybe have a hard time catching something. I can't remember. Let's see how this goes. How much time do we have left in this video? About five minutes. I'll try to like comment about my technique. Um, but you'll see that I like to stand sort of in the same few spots right on the side of the boat, close to where you can jump into the, uh, the chair to drive or, or change the sonar. Um, but we're just perking, perking. Yeah, I, I thought I remembered right. We just could not find a bite with this maggot for a while. But sometimes the maggots are great, so I didn't want to give up on it. I kept fishing with it. Oh yeah, it's showing where we are. We're at 34 there. I'll I'll pause it at some point on the map so I can point out a couple things on the map. Let me know if this is helpful though. I'm just trying to give a, some overview, especially if you're new to Norway or planning your first trip. Um all right, so now I'm looking down at all the different soft bait lures. 
Oh, I'm actually, what did we put on there? Uh, we're putting the real minnow on there. Yeah, that's a good option. All right, these huge minnows work well. I would say be a little careful with the lower level of stuff here if you're very new. They still work really well, but you just want to be careful. Like You want to ease into it. Those salty fish lures work really well too. Um, and also, you may have noticed we have a jig head size of 2.0. Yep, there it is, the 2.0 jig head. Now, at this point, I would probably use a 3.0 jig head. But again, I think if you're new, you want to just like set yourself up for some early success. So try to not go for too big a fish too early. Kind of ease into it. That's my suggestion. All right, this real minnow, I think we uh, do okay on this. We'll see. All right, so we've got it perking. This is like, I, I love fishing in this spot. You'll see me fish in this spot on a lot of these videos. Um, it just kind of gives me access to see the sonar at times. Um, and then I also can kind of move the line around a lot, but this is just sort of the spot I fish from. You'll have to notice how many times I do that technique right there. And I think it works so good. And I don't know if other people really do that a lot, but basically this, I'm going to describe it to you. I get perking on the bottom like we are here. Okay. And if I don't, there's a fish bite. That was a nice bite. And if I don't catch a fish pretty quick, I will reel it up. So remember it's retrieval speed 50, right? So I'll reel it up two to five meters. I might do one perk on the way up. So perking is still there, right? And then I drop it again down to the bottom and immediately start, start perking again. So what we've got is we've got perking is going the whole time. We lift it out of the bottom layer, keeping it perking. We drop it back into the bottom layer, keeping it perking. And a lot of times it's on that drop, sort of it settles and then boom, I'll get a hit. So you can just sit there and perk over and over and over. But I have found that if I move it around, if I keep it real, um, that that really helps. Wow, what, what a great start to fish. I mean, these are the kind of fish you want to catch as a new player to Norway. Spiny dogfish, I mean, those are not super common, but if you get on a run like we've kind of gotten on to lately, those are incredible. There's a map of where we are. Um, those are incredible. And also pollock. Pollock, which are very active at both 34 and 41 a lot of the time, they are incredible XP and incredible silver. Okay, we switched to the blue handmade lure. I think my thought here was, as, as this video is almost over, so we must catch a fish pretty quick. I think my thought was, let's just show the handmade one more time because these handmaids are just terrific. Don't sleep on how good these handmade foam lures are. And notice it's 11 p.m. Here's my general rule of thumb. Perking set up during the day, jigging set up at night. Especially later, we'll come back to this, but when we have higher level rig types unlocked, I, it is amazing perking during the day, jigging at night. So fast bite here on the blue handmade lure. Just the fishing is just so good. So good here at Norway. And again, this is the 34 meter bank. One thing that's nice for, you know, if you're new to Norway, you don't have to, uh, and there's a little haddock, lots of haddocks at 34 right now. All right, so there we go. That's gonna be the end of this video. All right, let's go to video number two. Um, so this one is all about the pilker and fillet rig, okay? So you have, uh, let me double check the percentages. At 35%, you unlock fillet rig, okay? So, um, by the way, let me check something. Yeah, okay, we'll see. I don't remember, I don't remember video three if it goes to... I think video three actually goes to um, once you've gotten to the medium setup, but I don't remember for sure if that's the case. Yeah, number three will be the first medium setup. So we'll see what all I go over here. But anyway, for a lot of people, and certainly for me, when I first got to Norway, the first type of fishing I did was using a pilker rod, the pilker rig, and either the bond or lurker, you know, some of these basic pilker, pilker lures. All right, so here we go. This is the Jack's Bond 7003.
We've got it on the same setup, 43 kilo liter line, 45 line on our Ocean Queen. Um, okay, yeah, let's take a look at this. All of the starter bonds are good. The Jigmeisters, I really like those Jigmeisters, especially the smaller ones. Uh, Dapper Pilks, I have not had as much success with, but um, maybe some of the bigger ones, but the smaller ones I just haven't done as much with. Of course, the Lurker 100.7 is an absolute all-star. But I'd say the first like three levels of bonds, the 70, the 125 or whatever, and the one and the 200, I don't remember what the numbers are, but those bonds are good. Um, they're not quite as good as the Lurker for me, but they're good. All right, so we just cast out this bond first cast here. Um, it looks like we are in the 41 meter bank on the 41 meter bank now. And this video is 15 minutes, so we'll definitely, you know, we'll, we'll fast forward a little bit through this one too. But I wanted to show fishing in as many different spots as I could, although I also wanted to emphasize that if you're new to Norway, you should really spend a lot of time at the 34 bank, the 41 bank, maybe even the 30 bank, um, and then eventually ease onto the 55 a little bit perhaps. But the deep spots, you know, there'll be times you'll want to go fish in the deep spots and that's fine but everything is less efficient. It takes longer to reel it out. Uh, in some of those spots, they're more likely to run into halibut and stuff that you just can't handle on low level stuff. So, all right, so we're at 45 meters, just perking it, trying to get that first bite. What time is it? It's 2.51 AM. Again, normally this is when I would be jigging, but I, you know, I did all of these videos sort of back to back to back to back. So I just wanted to keep it rolling. So I did use a the Pilka rig, even though it was overnight and they still do fine. I just, I think the jigging rig is superior overnight. I think the Pilkers sometimes are better during the day. So we are perking. Oh, there we go. So there I go. Perking, reeling it off the bottom and then dropping it back down to the bottom. That's my little, like, I've just added that little technique here recently. I've had other little variants that I've done, but that one is just like in the last couple days, I've kind of gotten in the habit and I felt like my bite rate has really increased. It's that drop. So many fish really like it either on the drop or when you first start to bring it up or when it, you know, first settles on the bottom. So it's kind of embracing that. I'm trying to get pilkering back right now. For some reason, I lost pilkering and all that. Oh, am I changing lures here? I might actually be changing lures. I might have felt like there's no reason why the bite should take this long in this spot. I think that's the case. Let's see. Oh, oh yeah, it's stuck under the boat. I love it. Let's see what lure we go to next. Jigmeister, this is a great lure. It's a great beginner lure. For the most part, you're not gonna get killed on this lure with something nasty. It's got a great uh, bite rate. Yeah, there you go. We're in the 41 meter bank. Oh shoot, let me check on, I can look it up on this computer actually. See, I think it's just overnight and it really isn't the lure that was necessarily slow. It's just, you gotta be patient overnight sometimes if you're trying to use Pilker. It looks like that I can hit shift plus. Oh, another spiny shift plus. Wait, what? Oh, shift plus period and shift plus comma. 
All right, what are we doing here? Oh, we're changing to a fillet rig. Okay, so I showed you the pilker, and now we're changing to the fillet rig. Shift plus and shift comma, huh? Oh yeah, that works. Okay, cool. I figured there was something. Um, okay, so now we're using the fillet rig. We've got a light, a small fillet on there. Um, we also, I also would say, if you are wanting to be a little more careful, you could use the um, strips instead of the small fillet. Strips team team seem to 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 target smaller fish. Um, and in just a minute, and it may even be on this video, I'm actually going to show you, um, you know, how to start thinking about cutting up safe and, and, and mackerel. See how we're not perking it yet? Sometimes you can just leave this sitting in the bottom layer and you will get fish. I think I end up perking it, but you don't have to perk these fillet rigs. There's a lot of rigs this way where you can just let them sit in the bottom layer. And uh, if you're patient, you'll get bites. Okay, I think I saw that there's a fish on the sonar and I was like, ah, let's get aggressive and target that sucker. So yeah, we start perking it here. So the only thing that's on the line is that piece of piece of fish. And again, once you have marine skill up to 35%, then you can start using this rig. The only time I would even recommend using this rig, really, other than it's just fun to experiment, right? It is fun to experiment. The only time I would actually just say like, oh, you should use this rig straight up is sometimes I think it can be interesting to use it at night. So let's say you don't feel like jigging or you just want to take a break, chill at night. Just throw on a strip or a small piece of fish on the 41 or 34 bank and, and do like what, you know, this kind of fish we're catching here. It's probably gonna be a sculpin or something, right? But it just gives you a chance to relax. If you're hitting it pretty hard during the day, you've got a really good bite rate. It's kind of fun just to do that at night. Oh yeah, maybe I am going to throw a fillet strip on there. I don't know if I'm actually going to use it though. I don't think we do. Okay, so let's see. What, we're, what are we doing next? Now we're going back to Pilker Rig. Okay, I think what we're doing now is transitioning to... Yes, okay. So the first thing we're doing is showing that not just you can not just fishing with the lure but you can also fish with the fillets on there so now we're using the lurker 100.7 and we're using a fillet strip on the line so the deal is you can put these fillet strips on your rigs from the moment you get to norway but unless you want to buy the strips with gold which is not worth doing by the way you can't really do it until you catch your first saith or mackerel and turn it into bait. And by the way, you, you want to be able to, I mean, that's something to work towards if you're approaching Norway, is make sure your bait harvesting is high enough to be able to cut up fillets of fish, saith and mackerel. I think it's like 60%. Is it 60? I think it is. Let me pause this really quick so that... Um, First of all, I'll show you on harvesting baits. It is right here. Um, fish fillet preparation. And if I go to the skills page on um, this Blunty spreadsheet, let's see if he has, oh, this is the skill tree, harvesting bait. Let's see, leveling. Mm, it might not have it on here actually, I'm sorry. I think it is 60% though. I think I'm right about that. I think it's 60%. Anyway. All right. So remember, this is the Lurker 100.7. Of all the small pilker lures, this is the best one. For me, at least, it's consistently been the best one since Norway came out. It'll definitely change over time. But right now, this Lurker 100.7 is awesome. And so now I'm just saying, like, hey, all these lures work really good. Looks like we're going to show you the bond. I'm going to put another fillet strip on there. Okay, and I'm also putting attraction elements. Okay, so attraction elements unlock at 40%. The auxiliary hook unlocks at 50, I think. But the as as of 40%, you can start using these attraction elements. Once your marine skills at 
you will notice, oh, this is great. We're now gonna show cutting up a, you will notice an increase in bite rate once you can start putting attraction elements. It's a big deal. And 40% is easy because every fish you catch, you're getting skill points early on. All right, so I think I'm showing you here, you can use the regular fillet knife. You don't need the big one. Notice that, let me just say this because I don't feel the pressure of the time. Notice that the safe is 5.8. 5.6 is an important cutoff. If it's above 5.6, you typically want to make it into a large fillet because you'll get four fillets instead of two. If it's less than 5.6, if you really need large fillets, still do it, but you're only going to get two. Where you'd get 10 of the strips or small fillets or whatever, you get a lot more. So um, that's kind of the general rule. Now, there are times where I want silver more than I want bait and in those cases just sell it at the fish market because safe mackerel they're worth an okay amount of silver but the bait does help especially with certain rigs so you want to keep your bait supply up too to get a, a huge fillet it has to be a certain certain weight range it's smaller than this so that's why we couldn't do it to a huge You see her there, we got four. Okay, so now we're using the bond and a little fillet strip, which should help us target small fish very successfully. And it looks like that's what we have on the line. So let's see what we do next. We still have a little bit of time in this video left. All right, a little sculpting. All right, what are we gonna do next? Going back to the lurker. Filet. That fire stick is almost dead. Oh, we're gonna put a rattle on this time just to mix it up. And, oh no, we're gonna put a bead on, okay? So we're show, I'm show, what I'm showing you here is there's a lot of different attraction elements. A lot of times I'll match them up color-wise as best I can, but not always. All right, and we've got a small fillet on instead of the strip. So this is, tar this is sort of acknowledging, okay, we want to target a little bit better fish, a little bit bigger fish. So let's see how this does. We still have five more videos to watch. Now, some of them are shorter, but still. And we are at 48 minutes. Does this need to be a part one and a part two? Hey, this looks like a nice fish, by the way. This is a nice size fish to catch on this setup. This is what you're after. You can re reel it right in. It's efficient, but it's actually got, got a little size to it. It's a safe. It's a nice safe. Okay, that one's just under five six, <laughs> so that one we want to turn into. Uh... Okay, what I mentioned auxiliary hooks. That's probably what we're going for next. Yeah, so auxiliary hooks. You can do those once you get your marine skill to fifty percent. Is what I have. Auxiliary hooks at fifty percent. So now we've got a full. The main part of the pilker rig is now fully fleshed out. The attraction elements should help get a fish. And the auxiliary hook should help avoid. All right, so either one, small fillets or the strip, since it's under 5.6. I think this should make 10. Yeah, there's 10 strips. Great. All right, fish own on the drop. Once you start adding attraction elements and all this stuff, you've got all this going on, you are living it up. Your bite rate should be terrific if you're fishing in the right spots. A lot of times, just on the drop, you're going to get hits. That's how attract. Att that's how much attraction the fish will have to those attraction elements. And uh, as long as you're using the right lures and all that. By the way, this is the fish. Just you know, I'll try to bring it back up, but 
when you get to the point where you can target mackerel at a high volume at this weight or bigger, a lot of times I catch those one kilo mackerel. That's when you can start leveling that marine fishing skill so good. There's a mackerel. All right. I don't know. Is there anything else? I feel like we've kind of shown everything. We'll see what where we go to next. Oh, I'm going. Why am I going back to the bond? Oh, just to show something random. A rattle and a ultra, the fluor, fluor, uh, why do I say fluorocarbon? Fluorescent squid or octopus, I guess. And we're still down at 41, right? See a little fish down there? All right, let's go catch it. So this should be, you know, we think a little smaller fish again. We've got the strip on instead of the small fillet. We've got a much smaller lure. This is a safe but good way to target fish. Oh, beautiful fish. 1.5 Pollock. Wow, we're going again. All right, let's speed this up. Where are we going to catch next? It's just such a good bite rate, as you see. Once you start getting all these elements going, it is so good. Oh, on the drop again. Can't even get it to the bottom. Small mackerel. Oh, and I should keep this one. Oh, I do. So if you're leveling up your bait harvesting, you can turn that size mackerel into a dead fish and use it as bait if, once you have the dead fish rig, which is much later. But I'm just saying, if you want to level up your bait harvesting, it's worth keeping those really small mackerel for that. Yeah, and it's too small to turn into any other kind of bait for mackerel. Doesn't work. So the only thing you can do with it that size, a non-marker, is turn it into a dead fish. Don't do the 753. There you go. All right. Very cool. All right, that's it. So there's number two. All right, let's jump right into number three. Okay, just as a reminder, we are now switching to the middle setup, the cardinal, the boat rod. So we have the potential of doing um, different rigs. I don't know if I've said that yet. I think I show it in one of the videos, at least possibly. But if you look at a boat rod, all of these bottom rig types, you can only do on boat rods. You can't do them on pilker rods. I guess the easier way is to show it on the pilker rod. So on a pilker rod, you can do the first five. Once you get to classic marine, none of these can you do. Pilker rods won't let you. Boat rods will. So imp important distinction. All right, so we've got another 13 minute video. All right, so this is an interesting setup. This is the um, this is the sort of like okay you know I'm doing really well at Norway, and I want to try to target a little bit bigger fish, right? So we're using a, a 300 gram lure instead of a 100 gram lure. We've got a 5 -0 auxiliary hook instead of a 2 -0 or a 3 -0 auxiliary hook. We're using red, which sometimes attacks shark uh, attracts sharks. <laughs> so uh, this is a little this is a little bigger. Yep, it's boat rod, light marine, 78 load capacity. We've got 60 kilo line. We got it. All right, where are we fishing? We're back at the 34 bank. Let's see if we catch anything interesting on this. So I think I think my point was at this point, if you're using if you're using this rod, right? The light boat rod, you've gotten to it 55% marine fishing and at 55 percent you have also unlocked classic marine bottom rigs but frankly you probably won't use it that much and it's not like particularly good for what we're talking about in this video at least which is high bite rate high silver quick skill points in marine fishing that was pretty fast bite rate at least the first time We'll see how long it takes to get another one. Um, 
And the next thing we'll talk about is the Marine Paternoster rig. It might even be in this video. It's either in this video or the next one. But that comes at 60% marine fishing. So those are kind of the things that, you know, we're talking about in this, in this, in this sort of medium range. All right, so there we go. We got a fish on finally on this lure and it looks kind of small. Oh, it's another dogfish. It's amazing the bite rate of dogfish we had while making this video. Yeah, okay. This is a good this is a good uh, thing to notice. The Lurker 200 works almost as good as the Lurker 100 and sometimes you do get a little bit bigger fish, so it is sort of a way to graduate up. If you, uh, again, if you've been fishing with the Lurker 100 a lot and you're like, yeah, I want to try to catch something a little bigger, take a chance, maybe get a trophy safe or something. The Lurker 200, I mean, you'll catch plenty of trophy safe on Lurker 100. Again, they're amazing. But the Lurker 200 can be interesting to try out. I think I was just trying to show a progression here. Like, we have this a little bit bigger setup. We can start using a little bit bigger a little bit bigger lures. We've got enough tests to do some of the bigger, like, mid mid-weight pilker lures so let's just kind of give them a try you know but ultimately you're better off staying with the higher bite bait uh, bite rate with something like the lurker 100.7 and all of the attachments attractions and stuff because you catch so many good fish on that you're still going to get plenty of opportunities for leveling up skills and as well as make a ton of silver so this is more something you do to experiment to feel like you're progressing but you always want to go back to, you know, um, ar that around that 100 gram, 150 gram lures and all the good jigging setups and all that at 34, 41 bank and just kill it. Just make tons of silver, lots of XP and lots of chances to level your skills. What time of day is it? I actually can't tell. It's like so, oh, 1351, it's 152. Eh, we, sh we should be able to get a bite here. This is unusual. Um, we're at the 34 meter hole, is that right? Yeah, we've gotta be. It, that's very unusual to, to have this hard of a time getting a bite. There it is. All right, so I was kind of showing you there, switching, uh, Switching between gear ratios. This Cardinal does have two different gear ratios. All right, there we're locking it up. It's too light a fish for any of this to make sense. We can turn our friction break down to 13 before the fish starts even thinking about pulling line. So, all right, so just a little three and a half kilo safe. We're going back to Lurker 100. Yeah, and this is the play. <laughs> this is almost always the answer bite rate 34 probably hit it on the drop no oh, we actually made it to the bottom all right there's perking a little stormy out there And, you know, it may have been that we had just at this point kind of fished this bank out a little bit. I mean, I streamed today. We fished this spot some. A lot of the testing I did making these videos, I was at 34. So, I don't know. All right, there's a fish. There's a fish. All right, so now we're going back to the jigging. So 2-0 hook is what we used before. Now we're gonna to upgrade to 3-0 hook. You know, and this is just a reminder, I think. I mean, you've already seen me fish. You've already seen me fish with this, but I think this was just a reminder in my head. I was kind of thinking like, yeah, you may feel like you've progressed. You've got a bigger setup or whatever. 
but until you get drop shots, honestly, these basic jigging lures and I mean, look at this bite rate, these basic, basic jigging lures and uh, perking lures and stuff that you maybe have already been using, they are, um, they're good. I mean, it, it's worth coming back to. So we just went to, we went from the one handmade foam to another. Looks like we changed to the, just the basic, the yellow. All right, we've got it at the bottom. Let's just watch this in real time, see how long it takes to get a bite. I think it's, we're, we're just at an hour now. I think we'll try to finish this video by maybe an hour 20 if possible. So as long as we're kind of fat, going fast through some of these videos, I think we can finish it all in one sit sitting. Um, I know this is a long video. I just, you know, just remember if you're, if someone was new to Norway, if that's you in fact, but if, if hopefully this is helpful, just talking through the different rigs that you need to be paying attention to, to get those marine skill points as fast as possible, because ultimately you'll make the most silver by prioritizing nice eel pout. Oh, we got a marine sky. That's <laughs> so funny. <laughs> um, you'll get the most silver and have the most fun long term if you prioritize some of these some of these methods to level up your marine skill fishing as quick as possible. All right, I feel like we've kind of seen what we need to see. I mean, okay, now we're fight now we're fishing with a black foam. Um, this might be. This one might have been hard. I know I had, there was something that surprised me because normally black foams do great, but. I'm just gonna skip forward. We're still using the black foam, no fish. Still using the black foam. Did I just call it? I mean, it doesn't look like we're going to get a fish. Yeah, I think we just called it. It shouldn't be that slow. Uh, but uh, again, I think I had probably fished 34 bank out a little bit. It, it probably needed to rest at that point. Okay, so let's go to let's go to number four. Here's the deal about number four. This is going to be. Uh, it's not controversial in a like true sense, but. You know, remember when I was talking about, do you just skip this middle setup? Basically, the question is, do you skip light boat rides? For me, the, the Marine Paternoster rig, which you unlock at, it should be 65%. Yes, yeah, 65%, okay? If you don't use this, Around this time, to me, leveling starts to feel like it takes forever. If you use this and you get good at targeting small fish, by the way, you can catch big fish on the Paternoster rig too, but the way I'm going to show you, you can target small fish. If you get good at that, I think you can level your marine skill much quicker, and it starts to teach you how to target these small fish, which once you get drop shot, if you want to continue to level your marine skill quickly, especially during happy hours and that kind of stuff. I'm telling you, if you can target mackerel, Atlantic sorry, um, you know, all these small fish, it's the way to go. All right, so let's look at the marine. Okay, so this is the pilker rod. I'm showing you here, you can't use it, okay? You have to be using the light boat rod. Now, marine paternoster is unlocked. Okay, so notice that it has the weight on there. That's, that's the one thing, I'll, I'll come back to the weight in a minute. So you have to put a weight on there and then you can put these different marine leaders. They can maximum of 50 centimeters. You start off, you can't use the attraction element, right? So when you first start using this, you can't use attraction. I think you unlock attraction at 70%. So for the first 5%, it may be better to still just use normal pilker rods because the attraction does help. But if it's a really good spot, you can still do really well without the attraction elements. So you're, we're using these little shrimp, these real shrimp 6.5s. Um, notice we got a fish on the drop. That's going to happen all the time on these. 
you're going to get fish on the drop. If you stop the fish, if you stop the, the line at 20 meters, I mean, this is what you want. Notice this, the XP you get, your chance of getting marine skill is huge because of how good a size they are for their species. I'm just showing you all the different. So I did a lot of testing on this. You see all these fish were caught on different real shrimp. So I'm just kind of showing you the different ones that, I mean, we've caught all kinds of fish on there. And usually the bite rate is great. I think this is at the 34 bank again, perhaps. All right, that first time we got it on the drop. This time, let's see what happens. So that was the real shrimp 07. It was that green one. We're using two hot hooks. All right, this one, it looks like it's going to make it all the way to the bottom. So it's in the bottom, but this is a 35 bank, so it's not that deep anyway. So there's still some small fish down there, so we'll still do fine, you know, catch a fish pretty quickly with this, um, with this setup. In most cases, you don't want to have to wait this long, but it, you just got to find the right spot. If you see, if you see on VK or elsewhere, somebody's talking about a really good Atlanta uh, a mackerel spot, that's where you want to take this rig to. Figure out what shrimp they're biting on, and um, that's what you want to take it to. All right, so we got that one from the bottom. Let's see what fish that is. Uh, it's a little haddock. I mean, there's no you can catch any all kinds of stuff on these pattern osters, but you will tend to do well with the small fish. All right, let's see. This one's dropping 15, 20. Do I stop it here? 25. Okay, I stop it at 25. Here's the trick that I learned. Oh, this is what we're doing. If you reel it in nice and slow from like 20 meters up, you will all, if it's a good spot, you'll almost always catch a fish really quickly. They seem to, the pattern oster, it seems to work really, well. there it is. It seems to work really well with that slow reel. So don't let it go to the bottom. If it's a good, if it's a good spot for small fish, stop it at 20. Let it sit there for a minute. If a fish doesn't hit it, then start reeling it in real slow. And you get 50, 60 fish an hour, sometimes more. Uh, just the bite rate is great. Okay, so it looks like I'm going to take the attraction elements off. This should be a lot slower. Those attraction elements do matter. Let's see if we get one this way. I've, I've sped it up. All right, it's dropping 15, 20. All right, we stop it. You let it sit for a minute. Fake perk it. So the thing with the pattern oster is you don't get the perking. You can't actually perk it. At least it doesn't give you the indication. All right, now we're reeling a little bit. It can just be slower without the attraction elements. We reeled it up. Now we should drop it back down. Yeah, we're dropping it. Hits the bottom. We're gonna let it sit in the bottom for a minute. There it is. So I see without the attraction elements, although I don't think this spot is great for small fish at the moment. Like it's okay, it's good, but it's not great. Oh, it's an eel pout, that's cool. All right, so there you go. Um, let's go to, so that's marine pattern oster. Next is the drop shot. Oh man, all right. So just to catch us up here. At least for me, I used the um, marine pattern oster without points. I used this to pretty quickly level up to the point where I could use uh, medium boat rods. Okay, that's that is at seventy five percent, and at the same time, you get droppers and drop shots, and this is a complete game changer. Once you can do this you know, the amount of XP silver you make is dramatically different. So let's jump in. Looks like the first thing. Okay, so here's the deal. You think, oh, I've unlocked medium boat rods. 
So we're going to have this heavy setup. Oh no, your best thing. I mean, you can do the medium boat rod and the big, and I'll show you that in the next videos. But the best thing you can do is return back to the, the, the light, the entryway setup and the medium setup, setup. Use them just like you were using them before, except you're going to add the drops. And those drops, I'm telling you, it is a game changer. All of a sudden, you are catching fish so good and so quick, it is crazy. So the, here's the drops. You see how it's got these hooks and lures below the pilker setup. So this is our very light setup. This is, so we're showing 34 again. And it's kind of like Paternoster, except it's so much better. We're just going to, and this, again, this spot isn't even doing that well for small fish tonight for some reason. Usually it's great. I mean, maybe it's because I fished it out, but it doesn't matter. This thing is like so good for small fish. Just let it drop to 20. If there's not a fish already on it, usually they'll hit it on the drop. But if there's not already, you can do perking on this. So you just perk it and boom, here comes a fish. It's so rare to actually get, actually perk it for this long. I don't think I realized that that fish dropped off and then I stopped reeling and another one just popped on. All right, let's speed it up a little bit. We know what's going on. Five, 10, it's dropping. All right, it's at, I should stop it around 20 or 25. Sometimes I go to 25. That's a safe. All right, <clears throat> another time. It's probably the last time. We probably switch it up after this. All right, so, oh, we stopped at 15. Okay, this is actually a good, a good thing. And, and see how quickly we caught a fish. If you wanna focus on small fish, you wanna, you wanna err on the side of keeping it more shallow. If you want to, so now I'm showing you everything. That one actually hit the lure. That one hit the shrimp. Um, if you want to focus on small fish, though, keep it shallow. So on 15, we called an Atlantic Sorry. At 25, we caught a safe. So it's kind of the, like, you just play with it there. All right, here is your moneymaker. Now, this might not always be the way to level up your marine skill as fast, although it still does pretty good. I've gotten a lot of points with this. I think the best is what we just saw going for small fish, but using the pilker and the rid and the jigging with the drop shots. I mean, this is like the amount of silver you will make. So you see, we've got large five Oh, the right attractants and look at these foam rubber fish as well as a huge minnow. I mean, y'all, this setup at 34 or 41, whoo, I'm telling you, it is amazing. This thing's amazing. All right, we're letting it drop to the bottom here. Okay, nice little fish. First fish, didn't take long to get. See what this is. 
Should be a safe. Yep. Say 34, full of safe again. They had kind of gone away for a couple days. They are back. All right, let's see what this is, what, what's going to happen here. 10 meters. There's 20. Hmm. On the drop. Probably a safe again, right? On the drop like that. A little bigger safe. Okay, here we go. Remember I told you nighttime is jig time. Everything else we're keeping the same, but now we're jigging with drop shots. Oh, it's so good. <laughs> Both of these setups that we're showing, I'm showing you right now. And you can change the drops. I mean, you know, use other soft lures and stuff. But, ooh, on the drop. Whoa. Oh, I forgot about this. Oh, this is like, this is actually, I think, a shark, guys. Ooh. Sorry for spoilers, but I'm pretty sure this is a shark. So you see how I did the gear ratio down. We actually have it locked right now, which just feels a little risky because it bounced pretty heavy there at the f first beginning of the fight. But I think what I was thinking was like, all right, we've got him coming up. Let's just keep him coming up. Let's don't give him time to dance around. Oh, look at that poor beagle. Woo. He's just dying to go. That 25 kilo poor beagle. Oh, what a good fish. Foam rubber fish 01. And and it was actually the one, it's that one. Yeah, it's the one on the line. You could tell from where he was hanging that he was on the line. Oh man, that was nice. All right, let's see what we get this time. 34 bank. Does this one actually make it to the bottom? How cool is it that that poor beagle came in while I was filming this? That's kind of wild. 34 has turned into a scary place with those sharks moving in though. Another decent fish here. And it's another safe. Okay, man, we got to make it through these next two videos pretty quickly here. All right, so now we are fully into the heavy setup, right? So this is actually the heavy setup, um, the medium boat ride, the end game reel, and we've got a full setup. So this is kind of the meta right now. If you're going for big fish, notice that we have a thousand gram lure on there. That is catching some good fish. The other thing that does for you, it drops to the bottom. We're fishing in a 120 meter hole right now, you know? So um, let me see if I can close. I don't know why it was like, I feel like the quality of the video has just gotten worse and worse. All right. Um, and look at these, these squid, these big squid. I mean, this is just what a lot of the biggest fish are coming in on are these big squid. So you see it sinking down at 40 meters. We got to wait till it gets all the way to, um, to, uh, 120 in this spot. We're in the 120 meter spot. So this takes a while. We'll just, uh, we'll probably just watch this first fish. I don't remember what I even catch. I think I go, I think I fish for two fish here. All 
All right, now we're perking at the bottom. I think we get a pretty quick bite on this first one. The second fish might have been a little bit longer wait for the bite. Oh, yeah, there it is. Uh, it's small. It's something pretty small, it looks like. So now we reel it in. You know, you're just kind of... With this kind of setup, I mean, you're just playing the odds, trying to hook into the bigger fish, the predators, the sharks, the tuna, the swordfish. Uh, some of the rare fish will bite on these squids. Um, poor beagles, Greenland shark. You know, that's kind of what you're after with this stuff. Another spiny dogfish. A lot of spiny dogfish were caught during while making this video. <clears throat> Four of them. The best one was on the foam rubber fish 01. Yep. <clears throat> All right, it's dropping back down. Um, I thought, let's see. I thought at some point I showed how many of the weeklies are on these squid right now. It's actually kind of crazy. But maybe I'm remembering wrong. Oh, yeah, here we go. All right. Here's the weekly sea records. Arctic skate. Bluefin tuna. So there's the lure and the squid we're using. Atlantic cod. Football fish. Halibut will have the lure. Um, redfish, wolffish, black ruff, blueling, cusk, the angler has the lure. I mean, I, I could have gone through, there's so many of them. I could have just kept going. I, I guess what I, the point I'm trying to make is this is just sort of the meta right now. It, it may not always be. Um, I'm sure other things will cycle in and, and take the spotlight, but right now these big lures with the squid attached at the bottom, they're kind of dominating the weeklies right now. Um, I think this goes on and on for a while. Let's just see. All right, we've got a fish on. We'll just see what the fish is and then we'll move on to the the last video. It's small, whatever it is. Fifteen meters. Mm. It's not too small. cod eight kilo cod all right last video thanks for being patient okay so you know one of the reasons why i'm showing this last video is just personal preference one of the things you unlock at 85 percent is the ability to use these giant um silicone jigging rigs and that's what i'm using here in this video i like them a lot um I used it on stream today in this very spot. So the 55 meter bank. Um, sometimes it's really good in the 75 up north of here. But this is a... Um, we've actually got some extra large hooks on this too. This is a fun rig. And these are fun lures. To me, it's just more simple. Sometimes the bite rate can be really slow. But I've caught... This is what I caught my trophy cod on. I've caught a ton of halibut on this on these lures. Um, some Greenlands, Greenland shark here and there. Trophy angler on these lures. I, some of my best fish on the ocean have been caught, but that's not the case for everyone. I just, I mean, you know, I think a lot of people are overall still doing better on the last setup I showed you, the squids on the giant pilker lure. But I've had a lot of fun myself using this setup. So let's see. Um, let's speed it up a little bit. We'll see this bite come in. 
I don't think the I don't think either one of these bites take that long. And I switched lures. I, I caught one a, one fish on one lure, and then I switched to another one and caught another fish on the second lure. Let's see. It's seventeen is the time. Overcast, pretty normal temps. All right, there it is. That didn't take too long. Uh, so this looks like pretty small for this setup at least. It's another eight kilo cod. I forgot about that. That's back to back eight kilo cods. All right, so we switch lures. Um, so this last fish, we'll go ahead and skip into this fight a little bit. Um, so we've got the fish on here. Let's see what, what depth he's at. Okay, he's, he's down at 45. So we've just hooked into it. This is a small halibut. So, I mean, it's not a large halibut, but it's, it's at least you can kind of see what it looks like with this huge setup I have to kind of force a small halibut in. You know, if this was on our 60 kilo setup, I don't know if this halibut is big enough to really even get that one trouble, but a lot of fish would be really annoying and slow to get in on our medium setup. But on this heavy setup, you just kind of muscle them in. Um, so it is big enough that we're having to gear down into the lower ratio which is kind of nice to at least see that but it's on the small side as far as halibut go i can't even hardly move it at the moment or I'm, i guess i'm trying to be careful not to just jerk the hook out of its mouth since it was pulling a little bit there And I think I show at the end of this fight, before we actually pull the fish in, what it would be like if I had my friction brake on 29 instead of locked, which basically the fish would be able to pull our line. Uh, it, it is strong enough where if I didn't have it locked, it would pull the line out. All right, there's 10 meters. Let me go back to real time here. All right, 10 meters, there's five meters. Let's see if I remember right. Well, that didn't really give you a full picture. I mean, if I put it down on 29 and a little bit of line got pulled out, would it actually have run with it? Probably not, but because this isn't that big a fish. But anyway, I also realized at this point, this halibut is under the boat. This is going to be a little bit of a pain. Come out, come out wherever you are. Because of the size of these leaders and everything, it's actually hard until you get that fish out of the water. Sometimes it's just tough to get it close enough. But once it pops out, yeah, there's a 31 kilo halibut. Okay. So again, I, you know, please let me know, was this type of video helpful? I mean, it, uh, I don't know. I hope it is. Uh, these are the types of these are the types of rigs, of gear, the types of spots of approaches that I have taken since being at Norway, slowly leveling through marine fishing, earning 
a lot of silver. I mean, we've made so much silver here. I know a lot of you have too. Um, it's a very generous map. It's expensive. Repairs are expensive. All of the lures are expensive. You know, that those giant silicone uh, shads that I'm fishing with, those are like two to 300 silver per lure and they wear out really fast. Everything's expensive, but you make tons of money too. So it's a nice, it's interesting. It's a fun balance. Um, See that poor beagle, 214 silver. Uh, so just quickly, you can make a lot of silver here. So it's a, it's a lot of fun. Okay, let me know if this was helpful. Um, this is kind of a different approach for me. I don't normally do video within video. I don't normally, I mean, I often go long, but this is a very long video. But I was trying to figure out how do I best communicate so much information without just standing here talking on the dock for 45 minutes. You know, I wanted to get some fishing in too. So this is what we came up with. But anyway, tight lines, everybody. Let me know if you have questions. Um, once I get to 100% marine fishing, I'll probably figure out a way to do an update video, at least showing sort of the new setups once they've rotated down and kind of how that's changed my approach. All right, talk to you ne next time, tight lines.